PXG and bargain are two words that are rarely used in the same sentence. With that being said, I think I've done it. Guys, how are you doing? Welcome back to a brand new video. It's Simon down here at Sanford Springs Golf Club. PXG Gen 2 driver I bought off eBay. The XF version, which is the higher launching, more forgiving head type. 300 pounds paid on the dot for this driver. The most expensive driver or second-hand club I've ever bought in my life. But it's got a very expensive shaft in it and the head is immaculate. These driver heads, or drivers I should say, retail at about 500 to 550 pounds from just standard stock shafts with this upmarket shaft in it as well. Realistically, this driver was probably about 750, 800 pounds and I've picked it up for 300. So that's why I think I can say I got this PXG driver for a bargain. And not only did I get the driver, I got an extra shaft to go with it, but it's a senior flex driver shaft with a PXG adapter on it. Now the driver, the original driver, is a 9 degree XF, so it's the higher launching, more forgiving version, but with a 9 degree loft. And then it's got a TX stiff shaft in it from Oban, which is the stiffest shaft they do. But then it's got a mid launching shaft, which is the Revenge series. So when I look at all the factors, who actually is this golfer that had it? Obviously it didn't do its job because it's now in my bag, but then with a senior flex shaft to go with it, potentially he's played about with that. He's got a nine degree head, but then a mid launching shaft, and then a high launching head. It's all quite confusing. Now I can hear a lot of you saying, Simon, 300 pounds is not a bargain for a driver. And I agree, to be honest, I could build a whole bag for 300 pounds. Um, that could easily get you down to 16 below handicap. But this is my point. Unless PXG release a warehouse of Gen 2 driver heads and they just want to get shot of them at 150 pounds a piece, this driver and this shaft is not going to devalue over the next two to three years. Therefore, yes, I've paid 300 pounds for this driver. But I'm probably, because I've got such a good deal on it, be able to sell it for 350 pounds in two years time. So it's not like I'm losing 300 pounds, I'm just investing it. Now I warmed up earlier with it around the parks. So I hit quite a few shots just to get a general idea and feel um, of the sound, how it felt off the face, um, its overall appearance when standing over the golf ball, um, uh, and the combination of the mid-size plus four grip on it, um, uh, the mid-launching shaft, the high-launching head. It's not one for me. It's definitely built for a slower club head speed player. I launch the ball too high anyway, I need something that's gonna knock it down there rather than help promote that launch. That being said, I don't think I've ever come across a driver that looks as confident as this one does. It looks great over the golf ball and it looks huge as well. Bearing in mind it's the legal sizes of every other driver out in the market, 460cc, for some reason it looks 20% larger. And I only think that's gonna help the kind of player that would want to put this in the bag. And even though I'm hitting it quite good now, now I've got used to the kick in the shaft and the bigger grip and the head, so on and so forth. I wasn't hitting it that great on the parks in my Primark shoes when I was warming up. I was hitting it a bit left, a bit right, predominantly right because the grip is so big. But it was forgiving out the heel, out the toe. I struggled to get out the middle and I don't know if that's the kick point in the shaft. I'm very good normally at finding the middle. I'm not saying I'm getting it straight, but I normally can find the middle of the ball. But that being said, regardless, I wasn't losing that much distance when it was an off-center shot. But there's a lot of drivers out there that do that. Ping G Series, Callaway X2 Hot. There's loads of them. But as always, as a past club fitter myself, I know how much people swings change year to year. So it begs the question, this is a very expensive head. This is a very expensive shaft. The amount of R&D, marketing, technology, materials that have gone into both of these components and they don't perform to my swing because 
it's potentially too high launch and it's too fast. I probably would be better with a cheaper shaft, a heavier shaft for a quicker tempo. This shaft is built for smooth tempo. So with all that money being spent into it, I potentially need a cheaper version. And I think that's my point when it com comes to these drivers. A PXG fitting is second to none. The stuff they can do with swing weighting, shafts, head design, I'm gonna let that plane pass. As I was saying, the PXG fitting experience is second to none. The amount of shafts at their disposal, the chance and ability to obviously change swing weighting in the head, the amount of heads, there's no question that if you go to a PXG fitting, you're gonna walk away with a head and shaft that works for you perfectly on that day. But what happens in a week's time? What happens if you have a lesson in a month? What happens all of a sudden you have an injury and you've just lost 20 miles an hour club head speed? What happens if you don't play for six months and then come back all of a sudden? Your swing is completely different. My point being is that these are excellent bits of engineering. So fine-tuned, so precise, that they can knock down spin, they can heighten your launch, they can even increase your ball speed. But what they can't guarantee is that you're gonna swing it exactly the same for the rest of your life. But what I can't deny is this driver looks aesthetically badass. The shaft, the head, the combination, the head cover, my, and the head cover is so heavy. Like, you can feel the quality in the head cover. So it does give you some kind of reassurance of the quality that's going into the driver itself. But there's no substitute for time and practice. The guys that are watching my videos that have been playing for 15 years plus have a very good idea now of exactly what works and what doesn't work for their swing. To the point now, I basically fill my bag with stuff that just looks cool because I like the look of it. I'm gonna make my swing work with the clubs that I have in the bag because I've been playing this game for so long. Yes, this driver isn't actually suited to my game. It spins too much and it goes potentially too high. But it then also means because it spins too much, my bad shots aren't that bad. Yes, I'm probably losing 30 yards on a good one, but does 30 yards really help my golf game? 260 yard plus on 88% of golf courses worldwide is more than enough to play decent golf. Going another 30 yards, 40 yards, 50 yards, realistically just gives you an awful wedge shot into the green. What I'm trying to say is, as you play this game more and more, the less you really care about the equipment in your bag. So genuinely, if anyone's looking for a PXG driver shaft, senior flex, then hit me up. Um, uh, I know this video is going to get mixed reactions and that's why I've been so excited to try and find the best deal I possibly can on this driver because it goes to show or highlights the secondhand market and the power of it and what you can put in your game and not really lose any money. Over the last two weeks I've bought, sold clubs for profit and I've got to test some of the most interesting, best looking, best conditioned clubs than I've been able to over the 10 years that I've been playing this game. By all means, get fitted for a PXG. Go and get fitted for Taylor May, Callaway. All of them can produce a great driver for you on the day. The question is, is it still gonna be that great driver for you in the future? Guys, thank you ever so much for watching this video. If you wouldn't mind leaving a like if you liked it, hopefully if you've watched to this point, you did like it. Um, subscribe if you are new, and um, yeah, catch you guys later.